Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a recommendation video for small town romances. I have always loved small town romances, but lately I have been devouring them. So I have a very large stack here to share with you. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is The Player Next Door by K.A. Tucker. So this is a kind of second chance, hate to love romance between Scarlett and Shane. Um, they dated before their senior year of high school and like things ended up with them being heartbroken. So Scarlett ends up leaving town after graduation and years later she is back in town and she is living next door to none other than Shane. She's also um, her his son's teacher. He has a son in fifth grade and she is his teacher and they are neighbors and he's a firefighter and they live in this really cute small town and this is a really fun small town romance. Then we have Like You Love Me by Adriana Locke. So Holden was fired from his job, lost his fiance. Like he is just not having a great time right now. And he comes back to the small town in Tennessee that I'm pretty sure is where he grew up or at least he visited often because his grandparents live there and he is working at his grandpa's vet clinic. And Sophie walks into this vet clinic. They were friends years ago when they were much, much younger and they had lost touch. And now there's an attraction there. So Sophie is running the bed and breakfast that her grandma left her and it's falling apart. She needs $5,000 in order to, I think like pay back the bank or she's gonna lose it um, not to mention all the repairs that she has to do and so Holden shows up because he's in town and he needs a place to stay and he needs a room um, and so he is staying at her bed and breakfast and that is how they kind of start hanging out again and become friends and he proposes a marriage of convenience he needs hit this job that he's interviewing for to think that he is married or going to be married and settle down um, so that they will see him as more serious and she needs money and he's like I will give you the money if you will do this for me and so they do and their small town gets involved they throw them this surprise reception and they keep pushing them together and it's super adorable I loved this book so much then we have That Second Chance by Megan Quinn. This whole Getting Lucky series is a small town series but I've only read book one. Um, so several years ago Griffin went to New Orleans with his three brothers and they were going to celebrate one of their 21st birthdays and they got cursed by a psychic who said their love lives would be doomed. And so they come back to Port Snow and something really tragic happens in Griffin's love life and this like rumor becomes well known and he refuses to fall in love because he thinks that he is just absolutely cursed. Um, and then Rin got into a car accident a year ago and it kind of changed her life so now she needs a change. So she is moving across the country from LA to Port Snow um, and is going to be the algebra teacher in the small town. And on her first day there she kind of gets into another car accident and Griffin is a firefighter who saves her. Um, and Rin is actually renting a house a few houses down from where Griffin lives and he's kind of hesitant to be around her but like people his family especially keeps pushing them together and they tell her like oh you don't have a car well make uh, Griffin take you or borrow his truck and so they keep pushing them together and it was super cute. Next up is Bittersweet by Serena Bowen. This is book one in the True North series which again is a whole small town series but I've only read book one. So oh this is another Griffin. Griffin is 27 years old. He's a farmer living in Vermont and he played football in college and he had dreams to go to the NFL but he kind of set those aside when his father passed away. So he has now come home and he's running Shipley Farms alongside his mom and helping take care of the farm and take care of his siblings. So this farm has apple, ciders, and dairy but um cider is where he really is focused and he makes cider and that's what he's hoping to expand. So Audrey Kidder is an old flame. They had a hookup in high school and she shows up in town and she works for a chef and she's trying to like get supplies for the chef at a like super cheap price and he tells her like nobody in town is going to give you these prices. Like these are true like farm to table or whatever like ingredients you're not going to get them for the prices you're asking and so things don't start off on the right foot um, but they continue seeing each other again and the sparks fly and it is their romance and it's super cute and I loved this small town feel. Next is The Bribe by Will and Nash, another series I've only read the first book in. This is the Calamity Montana series and Lucy is a former country music star who kind of left 
left the fame um, after she had a scare with a stalker and she has gone to Montana to kind of hide out and disappear for a little bit until she decides what she wants to do next. And she runs into she runs into a hiker and they have chemistry right off the bat. She lies about her name and then a couple days later or a couple hours later or whatever, later, um, she is driving through town, this really small town that she is hiding out in and Duke pulls her over because he is a policeman and he obviously takes her ID and finds out that she lied about her name and he recognizes who she is and so she bribes him to keep the secret um, but this is a cute, fun, small town romance. Then we have Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. So Naomi comes to town and everybody thinks that she is her twin sister Tina and Tina has kind of like made everyone in this town mad and she eventually becomes known as not Tina because she has to explain to everyone that I am not Tina and um, Knox offers her a place to stay which is like on his grandma's property or whatever and so um, he really takes care of her and Naomi is left taking care of her niece that she didn't know, even know she had and so Knox like really he like drives them to town and takes them shopping to buy clothes for school and just really sweet he really takes care of them and they had fabulous banter and this was a really good fun small town romance. Then we have Catherine Cowles. Every book Catherine Cowles has written is a small town romance and I would recommend literally all of them. I have a guide to Catherine Cowles I will link down below but I'm going to talk about Tattered Stars. This is where I would recommend that you start. This is book one in her Tattered and Torn series and it's so good. Um, so Everly comes back to, well, when Everly was young she saw her dad um, had a little girl trapped in like their barn and so she sneaks out one night in the middle of the night and rides a horse into town and reports this to the sheriff and it is Hayes's little sister Shiloh who was kidnapped and so Shiloh is back and safe. Well years later Everly comes back to town and Hayes is now the sheriff and he is not happy to see her back just because she brings up a lot of old memories but Hayes's family is super um sweet to her and it's like without you we wouldn't have our daughter and so they really like force Hayes to be nice to her and it is her romance with Hayes and it is so good. I really love this whole series. Then we have Parks and Provocation by Juliet Cross. So Lola has recently moved back to Green Valley, Tennessee and she is trying to find a new career and maybe move move somewhere else. So in the meantime she is living with her aunt and working at a bar and she locks her keys into her car. She is locked out of her car. So she calls her best friend who says she has somebody who can come and rescue her and this hot fireman shows up to help her out and it is her old high school crush who also was kind of her enemy, Jed. Um, so they have a lot of history together. They went to high school together. They were both, both had crushes on each other back in the day, but there was a miscommunication situation back in high school. And so that kind of made them become enemies. And Jed has always felt like Lola is the one who got away. So when he sees her back in his life, he refuses to let her go. And he asks her out on a date. She tells him no, but her friend convinces her to go because her and her friend have a podcast where they go on dates and then bring the guy onto the podcast to kind of rate the date. Not the guy, but rate the date. And um, he doesn't get a great score at first, so he requests a second date. And it just was super cute. I love this so much. Then we have Flawless by Elsie Silver. So this is a romance between a bull rider and Summer, who is kind of like his PR babysitter. He makes a comment that he doesn't like milk and it's caught on film and one of his main sponsors is a milk company so his like agent sends his daughter summer who also does work for for the company um to go babysit Rhett for the I think the summer and he is super grumpy by it grumpy about it but she stays out on their farm with them and um, goes to all of his events with him even though his family doesn't his family isn't super supportive of him being a bull rider this was such a fabulous book and I cannot wait for the next one then we have the whole Clifton Ford series by Devney Perry I've only read the first four books so far but this series is fantastic everything Devney Perry writes is small town romance I'm pretty sure everything she writes. Um, so Steel King is the first book in the series which takes place in Montana around a disbanded motorcycle club and Bryce, a new reporter in town, comes to town and she wants to uncover all of the this motorcycle club's secrets and it is her romance with the head of the 
motorcycle club, which isn't a, a, a club anymore, but, um, and it was super good. This story kind of like follows an overarching theme throughout, um, kind of an overarching story throughout. All the books definitely connect. You definitely need to read them in order, but this is a really great series. Then we have the Honey Mountain series by Laura Pavlov. Only the first three books in this series are out so far. The first book is my least favorite. So I'm going to talk about book three, which is Make You Mine. And you can read all of these as standalones. This follows um, the Thomas sisters. Is that their last name? It's a family of five sisters and it follows all three of them. Ashlyn is the youngest Thomas sister and she wants to be an author but after she graduates she's not really sure what to do with her life. She's like how do I make money? Um, so she jumps at the chance to be a nanny for Jace King. Jace is a local firefighter with her dad who's the firefighter chief and he has recently been divorced. He has two little girls and he needs help especially while he is um, at the firehouse. So she jumps at the chance because she will move into the house and babysit the girls for the few days that he is on duty and then when he comes home she moves out into the guest house so it gives her a place to live and she has several days off where she can write. And this is such a fabulous age gap nanny single dad romance. It has all the tropes and it is so good and um it takes place in their little town. You see characters from the previous books, but like I said, you don't have to read them. It can definitely be read as a standalone. They can walk to like the bar and the restaurants and it's just super cute. I really love this series. Then we have When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This just came out today, the day that I am filming this, and Amelia is a famous pop star who is known as Ray Rose, but her real name is Amelia, and she is obsessed with Audrey Hep Hepburn. She used to watch all of her old movies with her mom, and one night she's watching Roman Holiday, and she wants to visit Rome. So she looks up what Rome is closest to her, and it is Rome, Kentucky. So she needs a break anyway, so she makes a reservation at the bread and, bed and breakfast there, and goes to go stay. Well she gets into town late one night and her car starts smoking and dies in Noah's front yard and he comes out to help but she refuses to even open her car door or roll down her window because she thinks he's a serial killer. So he goes in and calls Mabel, I think it's Mabel, who was her one of his grandma's best friends and she owns the bed and breakfast and so he brings the phone out and has her vouch for him. So she gets out of the car and they go to the bed and breakfast and Mabel swears that there are just no rooms available and she's going to have to stay with Noah. Noah is a very grumpy, he owns a pie shop, it's just so cute, such a fun small town romance. Loved it. Okay, then we have the Winston Brothers series by Penny Reed. So I've only read the first, I think, three books in this series, but we're just going to talk about Truth or Beard. So Dwayne has had one girl on his mind for the longest time, and she doesn't love him, but really is into his twin brother, Bo. Um, and a moment happens where Dwayne is mistaken for Bo um, by Jessica, and so he feels super guilty afterwards. He's like, oh no, like, what did I do? And so he's afraid that he really has kind of just lost her forever when he when he did this. And so Jessica still is super interested in Bo, but she starts to think about Dwayne when she learns that it was really him. And it is their romance. And this takes place in this super small town. All their brothers are bearded. It is so fun. I love it. Okay, and then the last one is Southern Storms by Brittany C. Cherry. So Kennedy is grieving a loss when her husband kind of kicks her out and she has to start over. So she moves to Haven Barrow where her sister and her husband live and they um, they kind of have fixer upper homes and so they say you can live in one of these until it's time to sell it and you can get back on your feet. Well, I think it's her next door neighbor who is the like grump of the town and she meets him and he does not like people, people don't like him. And so he has a lot of a lot of like emotion kind of under underneath the surface and they get off on the wrong foot. But soon they realize that they know each other from years ago and years have passed since they've seen each other, but they used to be best friends when they went to the summer camp together. And so they, they kind of reconnect and um, it's their romance and it's super cute. So those are all the small town romances that I have for you today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.